The Empire State Building, located in the heart of New York City. The mother of all skyscrapers and symbol of the American dream. A true legend. The Empire State Building has changed the world of architecture. But what happens when this legend meets a modern day icon? No one knows how such a comparison will turn out. The Empire State Building faces the Burj Khalifa, the world's tallest skyscraper, the icon of Dubai, a gigantic building that literally scrapes the skies. Until today, nobody has managed to build higher than that. A contest of superlatives, two opponents, three categories, and lots of surprises. Architecture, which skyscraper revolutionized engineering? Features, which mega building offers the most technical innovation? And natural disasters, which skyscraper will stand for eternity? We will find out now in Legends versus Modern Icons. Manhattan, New York City, home to many skyscrapers. A skyline full of glittering giants. And right in the middle, the Empire State Building, the world's most legendary skyscraper. Built in 1930 with the clearest architectural mission in history. The builder asked the architects, how high can you make it and it won't still fall down? A building the likes of which the world had never seen before, with an incredible height of 443 meters to the top. Constructed with more than 730 tons of steel and aluminum and 10 million bricks. 260,000 square meters of rentable floor space on 102 floors. A unique workplace for over 20,000 people. The Empire State Building is a true legend in the history of architecture, and even today one of the most visited attractions in the United States. But can this legend now, in the 21st century, keep up with the icons of the present? Dubai on the Persian Gulf. Nowhere else in the world are there more skyscrapers over 300 meters tall. Its skyline literally puts all cities worldwide, whether in Europe, America, or Asia, in the shade. When you look at Dubai from the desert, the sparkling skyscrapers appear like a mirage. And right in the middle, the Burj Khalifa, the tallest building on Earth. At 828 meters, the building breaks every record and by a huge margin. Built using over 330,000 cubic meters of concrete and 103,000 square meters of glass. With more than 309,000 square meters of floor space and 160 floors, the Burj Khalifa is more like a vertical city. The Burj Khalifa and the Empire State Building are both incredibly impressive skyscrapers. Whether then or now, what the engineers have created are masterpieces. Empire State Building versus Burj Khalifa. The contest begins. Category one, architecture. Which skyscraper has revolutionized engineering? New York in the early 20th century. The economy was booming and immigrants from all over the world were flocking to the city of dreams. In Manhattan, there was only one direction left, upwards, but... It really wasn't worthwhile to build 
tall buildings with the classic construction. Because the higher up you went, then the thicker the walls had to become, and that meant there was less space inside the building. For thousands of years, houses were built as solid structures. A building's load was borne by its walls. Each additional floor required the brickwork of the outer walls to be strengthened. And then a development occurred that completely turned New York and Manhattan upside down. Steel frame construction. Steel frame construction, a revolution in architecture. Steel frames inside the structures bear the entire weight. The surrounding shell is just a facade. The home insurance building in Chicago was considered a pioneer in using this technique. At 42 meters high, it was the first high-rise building in the world. The creators of the Empire State Building made use of the technique and thereby reached unimagined heights with the help of steel frame construction. At the end of the 20s, fierce competition for the altitude record raged in New York. Developers expected to gain prestige and also higher rental income. In the beginning, the Empire State Building was only supposed to be 300 meters high, but the builders wanted to win that race. Consequently, engineers pushed the new construction method to its limits. The core of the Empire State Building is 320 meters high, made up of vertical and horizontal steel girders. This is followed by an approximately 60 meter high tower, also made from steel girders. The building is topped with a 67 meter tall pinnacle. The steel beams give the skyscraper an enormous load-bearing capacity, so the structure requires less space. This is a major advantage for the densely built-up and expensive Manhattan. And so, on the 1st of May 1931, the legend achieved a structural height of 381 meters. To crown it all, the Empire State Building even received its own zip code. After the Empire State Building, no higher skyscraper was built for a long time. The possibilities of steel frame construction, so to speak, were exhausted. For 40 years, the skyscraper was to remain the tallest building in the world. Only in 1972 was a new record set by the World Trade Center at a height of 417 meters. A new era had begun. Two years later, the Sears Tower in Chicago rose 442 meters into the skies. In 1998 came the Petronas Towers in Kuala Lumpur at 452 meters. And in Taiwan, in 2003, the 101 broke the 500 meter barrier for the first time. But even this record was not to last long. Since 2010, the Burj Khalifa has not only towered over the skyline of Dubai, but also over every other skyscraper in the world. By more than an astonishing 300 meters, how was it possible to create such an architectural marvel? When the Burj Khalifa was completed, it sent shockwaves through the engineering industry. With this construction, it was the dawn of a new era of mega-tall buildings still in force. Just like the Empire State Building, the trick is concealed within the building's core. Its architects opted for a completely new structure, a Y-shaped layout with three wings. The idea behind the design was that the wings would support each other and converge in a central axis. This construction is absolutely unique. It is stable, it allows a lot of light to enter, and it makes the skyscraper extremely aerodynamic. Within the skyscraper is a hexagonal core of high-strength concrete, which extends upwards to the steel structure at the top. The wings support this vertical core and give unprecedented levels of stability against vertical and horizontal forces. 
The builders originally planned for a height of only 510 meters. However, in static tests, the Y-shaped construction proved to be much more stable. When the clients learned that their building could be made even higher, they opted for the increased height, all the way to the top at any price. During construction, engineers kept raising the building ever higher. In the end, it stood at 828 meters. This makes the Burj Khalifa the tallest building in human history and possible only due to the static backbone of its unique Y-shaped design. In steel frame construction techniques, both buildings set records, and so both rightly deserve their legend and icon titles. Now for round two in the category architecture. Which skyscraper wins in terms of speed and efficiency? The construction of the Empire State Building began on the 17th of March, 1930, under extremely difficult conditions. The construction site was located in between two major thoroughfares. Manhattan also had no space to temporarily store the gigantic building elements. The solution was groundbreaking and revolutionized the logistics industry. Today, we see something similar in just-in-time procurement. Two plants in Pittsburgh, 700 kilometers away, cast the steel parts exactly as instructed by the architects. They were transported by rail and truck to the East Coast and would arrive at the Manhattan construction site within just eight hours. Perfect time planning enabled the Empire State Building to be built in record time. The steel girders were allegedly still warm when the cranes brought them up to the top. Another highlight was the construction cranes, which for the first time were not positioned next to the building, but on the growing structure. After completing one floor, workers dismantled the cranes and reassembled them one floor higher. Around four and a half floors per week could be completed in this way. In Detroit, Henry Ford invented the first production line for cars. At the Empire State Building, they adopted his methods from bottom to top, a vertical production line, so to speak. Construction time was just 13 months, and the Empire State Building cost only half as much as expected, 24 million US dollars. Quick and efficient at the same time. Could the engineers of the Burj Khalifa go one better? Self-climbing trains on high-rise construction sites had become standard worldwide. But engineers faced a very different problem. The heat. Temperatures in the desert city of Dubai can rise to 50 degrees Celsius during the day. At these temperatures, normal concrete quickly hardens. Workers therefore concreted mainly at night and added extra water and ice to the mixture. It took twice as long for the Burj Khalifa to reach the height of the Empire State Building, even almost a hundred years later. The Burj Khalifa is almost twice as high as the Empire State Building, so everything that has to go up takes more time. Three specially developed high-performance pumps transported up to 33 cubic meters of concrete per hour to a height of more than 600 meters. And then came the facade. Unlike the Empire State Building, it was made of glass and aluminum rather than limestone and granite. The facade has upset the whole schedule. The original supply went bust and it took months to find a new one. In the end, the opening had to be pushed back by over a year. Over a six-year period of construction, the building swallowed up around 1.8 billion US dollars. Taking inflation into account, that amounts to about two and a half times the cost of the Empire State Building. In terms of speed and efficiency, the Burj Khalifa is way behind the Empire State Building. But those who aim high sometimes stumble. 
Now for round three in the category architecture. Who were the workers who made it possible for these gigantic constructions to be built? The Empire State Building would never have been possible without Mohawk Native Americans. These men walk like high wire artists over the chasms of New York without any safety wires. 300 meters up and no silken thread for protection. Since 1916, Mohawk Native American men have been involved in high-level construction sites. That means that most of New York's iconic buildings, including the Empire State Building, were raised in part by these Native American iron workers. Safety measures were virtually non-existent at the time. According to official accounts, five workers died during the construction, although the New York Daily News gave reports of 14 deaths. Overall, 3,500 people risked their lives to create the legend Empire State Building. Jobs were rare because just before construction begins, Wall Street experiences the worst crash of the 20th century, dragging the entire world into a deep economic crisis. Nobody had expected such a catastrophe back then. In the USA alone, the unemployment rate rose from 3 to 25%. Millions of people lost their investments, jobs, and pensions. The economy was in ruins. Despite the crisis, the developers of the Empire State Building pressed for the project to go ahead. Those needing to earn money tried their luck above the clouds. Poverty and unemployment also prevailed in the Mohawk Reserves. Fearlessness and experience become a tradition. New York skywalkers still ensure today, as they did in the past, that skyscrapers can reach up into the heavens. Fearlessness was also needed in Dubai, the city of superlatives. In the 21st century, security measures on high-rise construction sites have improved considerably. But there is always a risk. During construction of the Burj Khalifa, officials reported one death on site. To this day, the true heroes are those who overcome their fear and dare to go to the very top, life on a tightrope. The Burj Khalifa's pinnacle has a diameter of just one meter, and this was to give off a bright light. One man made this possible, rope access professional Mick Flaherty. First, seven holes needed to be drilled in the 55 millimeter thick steel. <laughs> and the spotlights installed. But the job wasn't over yet. Mick needed to upsile down and seal the joints. This one's a serious one. Yeah. Okay. Very serious. You all ready now? All ready, sir. Okay, over the edge. It's a long way down here. Yes, sir. Long, long way down. The irony of the story was that someone else should have undertaken the task. But the climber originally hired backed out at the last minute. So Mick had the honor. We are going to finish by sealing. At an altitude of over 800 meters. Job finished. Mick has got the tallest building in the world to shine. So that is the job complete. This is what it's all about. Appreciating your job. To this day, it's not the machines that give buildings their sparkle. It's the heroes made of flesh and blood. The verdict so far. Architecturally, both skyscrapers are impressive. The Burj Khalifa towers above all with its record height, while the Empire State Building stands out with its incredibly fast construction time. The duel now enters the second category, features. Which mega building offers the most innovation? 
rush hour in Manhattan. For the past 100 years or so, people have been pouring into ever taller buildings every morning. A key issue then is now. How do they get to the top as quickly as possible? The solution sounds simple, lifts. What we take for granted today was a groundbreaking moment in the history of skyscrapers. Lifts were long considered to be lethal. Although invented as early as the end of the 17th century, there were constant reports of terrible accidents. Cables kept snapping. Nobody wanted to get in an elevator. Everyone thought they would die. This wouldn't change for 100 years after the invention of the elevator, after the event of 1854. At the World Expo in New York, the young American Alicia Graves Otis presented the first fall safe lift. Its special feature was an automatic brake. If a cable snapped, a spring would extend and wedge in the lift's guide rails and secure the car. Before that, people in elevators could only pull kind of a handbrake in an emergency. Over the years, Otis continued to develop his lifts. 68 of them travel up and down the Empire State Building every day. Six express lifts went from the second floor to the 18th floor without stopping. Maximum speed, six meters per second. From there, a smaller lift took passengers to the viewing platform at a height of 320 meters. Passengers needed around 54 seconds to get to the 80th floor, a unique experience at the time for anyone entering the Empire State Building. The lifts were among the fastest and most advanced of their time. But much has changed since then. Today, more than ever before, it is important to get as many people as possible to the top in the shortest possible time, especially in the tallest building in the world. How quickly can passengers get to the top here? The Burj Khalifa uses the latest generation of cable lifts, 57 to be exact less than in the Empire State Building. But a special feature is that two of the lifts are double-deckers. With a double-decker elevator, two cars can travel in the same shaft at the same time. This saves space and increases efficiency enormously. Moving at 10 meters per second, the double-decker lifts are among the fastest in the world. But even in Burj Khalifa, passengers have to change lifts if they want to get to the very top. The cables reach their limits at 500 meters and above. Beyond this mark, the steel cables weigh too much and would snap under their own weight. The elevator manufacturers, they reach their limit at a certain point. 500 meters is the maximum height that a single elevator can reach today. One lift first takes visitors to the 124th floor at a height of 456 meters. Another then takes passengers to the 148th floor, to the world's highest viewing platform, at a height of 555 meters. From the lobby to the first viewing platform, passengers need only 55 seconds to enjoy the view of Dubai at a height of over 450 meters. The verdict so far? In terms of speed and height reached, the lifts in the Burj Khalifa are superior to those in the Empire State Building. However, both systems were groundbreaking for their time. But speed is not everything. What about comfort? Where is it more luxurious to live and work? New York's summers are hot and sticky, as they were around 100 years ago. Away from Central Park, Manhattan is mainly asphalt and concrete, which effectively trap in heat. 
especially for the office workers on the upper floors of the Empire State Building, summer was a misery. Back then, builders depended on natural ventilation in houses and skyscrapers. Today, luxury looks a little different. The Empire State Building's architects, therefore, opted for a steel and limestone facade. It was intended to store the cool night air for as long as possible, while not heating up during the day. But in summer, the facade's natural insulation was not enough. People tried to make do with fans. Although the world's first air conditioning system had already been invented. Willis Carrier spent years tinkering with his invention, a machine that cleaned and humidified warm air via filters, and as a secondary effect, also cooled the air. In the summer of 1902, the engine of the first modern air conditioning started, but success was a long way off. Carrier's invention was not created to cool the air. His real intention was to clean it, and that's why it took so long for word to spread about the advantages of using air conditioning, an irony of history. The owners of the New York Rivoli Cinema were one of the first to realize that an air conditioner does one thing above all else, it cools. More and more cinemas and department stores followed, and skyscrapers, on the other hand, it took longer. The Empire State Building does not get a central air conditioning system until 1950 almost 48 years after air conditioning had been invented. In retrospect, the Empire State Building might have been late, but at the time of its construction, no one really understood how much air conditioning could help, and the retrofit was very expensive. On comfort, the legend gains points only quite late on, but its air conditioning has undergone modernization twice since then. In Dubai, temperatures of 50 degrees Celsius are not uncommon. Average humidity is 90%. Extreme conditions that require extreme solutions. Not least because the facade of the Burj Khalifa is made mainly of glass. The silver outer shell is intended to let the skyscraper literally shine. To live and work in comfort here presented a real challenge for the engineers. A glass facade allows a lot of light into the building, but at the same time it heats up the rooms. And in an extreme climate, like in Dubai, you can't compete with that heat, not even with the most powerful air conditioning system. Special glass was therefore developed for the Burj Khalifa, using a double coating of titanium and silver, which reduces solar radiation to 18%. A central ventilation and air conditioning system functions in combination with the special glass to ensure indoor temperatures remain constant and fresh air is supplied to the Burj Khalifa, also in the lifts. Whether on the ground floor or on the 160th floor, it's always pleasantly cool. On comfort and microclimate, the iconic Burj Khalifa outperforms the legendary Empire State Building. But which of the two skyscrapers is more commercially successful? Which one has the greater appeal? The Empire State Building was designed as a huge office complex. Up to 20,000 people were to work over 102 floors and 260,000 square meters. There are two viewing terraces for visitors on the 86th and the 102nd floors. Even five years after opening, the Empire State Building was almost completely empty above the 41st floor. A catastrophe. Some people even referred to it as the Empty State Building. The reason was neither its engineering nor its features, but rather the world economic crisis. Buildings and offices stood empty all over Manhattan. Fortunately, the governor and president of the Empire State Corporation was persistent. His name was Al Smith, and it is largely due to him that the project was successful. 
Smith's goal was to turn the office building into a landmark through skillful PR work and thereby attract paying visitors. Al Smith invited every state leader to the skyscraper. He escorted Prince Faisal of Saudi Arabia to the top and even Winston Churchill paid a visit. The Zeppelin docking station at the top of the skyscraper was another attempt to draw attention. An airship once docked there for a whole three minutes. In the past, people thought that the Zeppelin was the means of transport of the future. They might have been wrong, but it was this action that brought the Empire State Building into the headlines. Hollywood also gave it publicity. In the final scene of King Kong, the giant ape climbs to the top of the Empire State Building. After the film's premiere, the skyscraper received many visitors. In the following years, the skyscraper served as a backdrop for countless films, and with growing fame came new tenants. But it took almost two decades until the building finally started to make a profit. The Empire State Building is not alone in this. A bizarre correlation exists between skyscrapers and economic crises. The curse of the record-breaking skyscrapers is almost legendary. Allegedly, they are an indicator of the next economic crisis. Every time the next mega skyscraper is planned, the next economic crisis is on its way. After the opening of the former World Trade Center, the first oil crisis occurred in 1973. The construction of the Petronas Towers in 1997 happened precisely during the Asian crisis. And shortly after completion of Taipei 101, the dot-com bubble burst in 2000. Experts suspect an economic phenomenon. Such extreme construction projects only take place if builders and bankers are very optimistic. They simply believe it's worth taking big risks, but that's often the case just before a big recession. As with the Empire State Building, the Burj Khalifa also initially had plenty of vacancies. Although 90% of the apartments had already been sold to investors, there was a lack of tenants. Bad luck for the investors. But due to the financial crisis, which took place after the beginning of the construction of the Burj Khalifa, many of the tenants were missing at the opening. So the operators had to make the skyscraper as attractive as possible. The Burj Khalifa offers pure luxury. Between the first and the 39th floors is the world's first Armani Hotel. On the floors above are 1,044 private luxury residences and offices. And on the 124th floor and the 148th floor are two outdoor terraces for visitors. For shopaholics, the Dubai Mall at the foot of the skyscraper offers 1,200 shops. An underground passageway now connects the mall and the record-breaking skyscraper. And the largest water fountain in the world was to raise the Burj Khalifa's appeal even higher. Over a length of 275 meters, fountains spurt water up to 150 meters into the air. Even Las Vegas can't keep up with that. If the economy does not go as planned, there's only one option, public relations. More important than anything else was to keep the Burj Khalifa permanently in the headlines. One of these was a gold bar machine. Instead of banknotes, it dispenses pure gold, at least for wealthy customers. And Hollywood was also to provide prestige and therefore economic success for the Burj Khalifa. For the film Mission Impossible Ghost Protocol, actor Tom Cruise hung from the skyscraper's facade as part of a stunt. Thanks to all these attractions, the Burj Khalifa is today a cult. No skyscraper can match it, but a few apartments are still empty. Both legend and icon continued to struggle for economic success for years after their openings, but both have achieved cult status. The verdict on category two. 
on innovation, the legend cannot quite match the icon of modern times. But maybe it will gain points in category three, natural disasters. Which of the two skyscrapers will stand for eternity? One of the biggest challenges to a skyscraper survival is the wind. A bizarre incident from 1979 shows how strong wind forces can be at the top of the Empire State Building. December 1979, Elvita Adams wanted to take her own life. She jumped out the building, but a gust of wind pushed her back up and she landed only one floor below, surviving with a broken hip. At the highest point of the Empire State Building, winds can hit at speeds of around 130 kilometers per hour. The building's robust construction means it can withstand this wind load, but skyscrapers face another aerodynamic problem. It's not just the pressure and the speed at which the wind hits the building, it's mainly the swirls that are created on the sides. Air flows around the skyscraper and creates lateral turbulence. These low pressure areas draw in the building from the sides. The higher the building, the stronger the turbulence. Engineers therefore tapered the Empire State Building towards the top. The less compact outer shell gives wind a smaller area of attack and ensures the building has hardly any sway. This construction method means the skyscraper's pinnacle sways by just under four centimeters, even in hurricane force winds. And what about the Burj Khalifa? Dubai regularly experiences desert sandstorms. Winds can hit the Burj Khalifa at up to 240 kilometers per hour, about twice the speed of winds at the Empire State Building. How does the more than 800 meter high skyscraper withstand such enormous wind loads? Anytime you're pushing the envelope and you're building the tallest skyscraper, then you're gonna have unique challenges that's gonna make unique headaches for the architect. And they have to come up with novel solutions. Otherwise, the consequences could be fatal. The architect's skill was to analyze prevailing air currents and adapt the building's layout accordingly. When the wind gusts against one side of the Y-shaped construction, the wing behind is unaffected and stabilizes the Burj Khalifa. 26 terraces also weaken and break wind turbulence at the sides of the skyscraper. The wings are also rounded to improve aerodynamics. The builders have chosen a round shape. This gives the wind even less surface to attack. And the skyscraper tapers towards the top, the same method used at the Empire State Building. This clever combination of architectural elements means that dangerous lateral winds have hardly any impact on the Burj Khalifa. Even in hurricane force winds, the pinnacle sways only by one meter 40. Verdict, both the Burj Khalifa and the Empire State Building are shaped to withstand wind loads and lateral turbulence without any problems. But what about earthquakes? Can the two skyscrapers also withstand natural disasters? Compared to the western U.S. states, the East Coast is one of the more inactive regions. But around New York, there are always minor earthquakes. Statistically, a quake of magnitude five will occur every hundred years. Yes, earthquakes in New York are rare, but the area is extremely densely populated. A single major earthquake in New York City would be catastrophic. 
When constructing the Empire State Building, the engineers also needed to take into account this potential emergency scenario. To prevent the skyscraper from dangerously moving sideways during an earthquake, it first needed reinforced foundations. This comprises 210 concrete columns reaching down 17 meters into the ground. A dozen of these columns rise 320 meters upwards and form a structure for the steel frame. The Woolworth Building in New York is the first skyscraper with a reinforced foundation. The architects of the Empire State Building also use this technology. This construction method makes the center of gravity extremely low. But this is not the only reason why the skyscraper can defy earthquakes. Buildings made of stone are rigid, not exactly an advantage in the event of tremors. Things are very different with the Empire State Building. Even if it looks rigid and unbending, its steel framework is extremely flexible. The steel frame is elastic, can give way and flex to a relatively high degree without collapsing. An earthquake presents no major problem to the Empire State Building. The desert state of Dubai rarely experiences earthquakes. But when it happens, the basic conditions there are not exactly ideal. The Burj Khalifa is located in the middle of the desert. As in all of Dubai, below the sand is soft limestone. The ground under the Empire State Building consists of solid granite. In Dubai, on the other hand, it is sand and siltstone. This is probably the worst case scenario when planning an earthquake-proof skyscraper of this size. Under such conditions, how can you guarantee that the world's highest skyscraper can stand firm? Here too, engineers relied primarily on particularly stable foundations. They comprise more than 800 concrete piles that extend downwards up to 50 meters into the ground, twice as deep as the Empire State Building. On top of these is a reinforced concrete base, almost four meters thick. With the so-called pile foundation, the friction of the sand is sufficient to hold the building, which weighs 500,000 tons, stable, even when subject to vibrations. As in the Empire State Building, the Y-shaped construction steel frame is also elastic. An inner reinforced concrete core provides further stability. As a result, the highest structure on Earth can withstand earthquakes up to level six on the Richter scale. It is impressive that both the Burj Khalifa and the Empire State Building are earthquake resistant, thanks to their flexible steel construction and reinforced foundations. Now for the final comparison in natural disasters. There is one more hazard that can be fatal for skyscrapers, fire. As on the 28th of July, 1945, a military pilot gets lost in fog and flies his plane across Manhattan. At over 200 kilometers per hour, the bomber crashed against the 78th floor of the Empire State Building. The impact tore a hole of around 33 square meters into the building. The impact was followed by an explosion. Over 3,000 liters of aviation fuel flow down the corridors, down the elevator shafts, several floors caught on fire. The Empire State Building was in flames and at the time was not equipped with an automatic extinguishing system. Instead, there were over 400 water hose connections within the building, fed by a separate water supply. Fortunately, the main water pipe was still intact when the fire services began extinguishing the fire.
Office workers attempted to escape the flames via two staircases, but dangerous smoke had collected there. In a high-rise building fire, smoke is the greatest danger because it accumulates in a stairwell. In those days, both office workers and firemen contracted smoke poisoning. 14 people lost their lives in the disaster. 25 were injured. But thanks to its robust construction, the Empire State Building withstood the impact and suffered no structural damage. Just two days later, the skyscraper reopened its doors. And today, modernization means it has state-of-the-art fire protection so that people in the Empire State Building will stay safe. In Dubai, how dangerous could a fire be for the Burj Khalifa? The builders in Dubai wanted to create the tallest skyscraper in the world and one of the safest. The Burj Khalifa's core is made of concrete. A practical side effect is that the material provides not only stability, but also fire resistance. The Mega Skyscraper is also equipped with an electronic early warning system. When a smoke detector, heat sensor, or water sprinkler is triggered by a fire, a whole network of high-performance fans start up. These push clean, cool air indoors, preventing the development of life-threatening smoke. It was clear evacuating all residents at once was too risky. That is why the architects incorporated special shelters during construction. People can wait there safely for help. The Burj Khalifa has nine safe rooms. These can withstand the heat of a fire for two hours and are equipped with separate air supplies. One is located on approximately every 25th floor. In both Dubai and New York, engineers have successfully managed to protect their buildings against fire. Verdict. In the final category of natural disasters, both the Empire State Building and the Burj Khalifa impress. Almost 80 years lie between the construction of the Empire State Building in New York and the Burj Khalifa in Dubai. In terms of architecture, features, and natural disasters, then or now, the two buildings set impressive standards. The legend still bears its title mother of all skyscrapers to this day. And the Burj Khalifa is nothing less than an impressive icon of modern times.